Hey, everybody, welcome in. It is time for another episode of Three Guys Before the Game, episode number 417, and not the topic that you thought or that we thought we were going to get into, but rather the breaking story from earlier this Monday morning that Shane Lyons is out as the athletic director at West Virginia University. That becomes the number one story. We will get into that in detail. We will also get into what was a very successful week end for the Mountaineer sports teams from women's soccer winning an NCAA tournament game to the Mountaineer basketball team winning at Pitt on Friday and to the Mountaineer football victory over the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll get into all of that, plus your text questions and comments. The Dean is in. The Senatore is in. And away we go, guys. As I said, well, I guess I also need to say this. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us in part, not in whole, but in part, by the Burdette Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. They've got another great promotion coming up this weekend. They could put five hundy in your pocket. That's five hundy American in your pocket. We'll talk about that in a second. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, your full service Conica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. That's ComaxWV.com. Say, what do they do? What, are they, what, what is this Comax? I don't have a... Uh, what is a Comax? Well, a Comax will come in and they will handle all of your business's IT. They'll manage your IT. They'll manage your voice, your phone services. And they'll make sure that you are properly protected so that your stuff, i.e. your data, and everything else that you hold dear to your computer heart is safe and well taken care of. Visit them at comaxwv.com, comaxwv. And basically, they're a winner. Ten years, they have been named an elite dealer by ENX Magazine. That award is exclusive. No other dealer in the state has ever received it. Comax wins it ten times. As I said, they're the John Wooden of the ENX Award. All right, let's jump in. Shane Lyons is no longer the athletic director at WVU. It happened quickly, and... It's over, just like that. This is not one of those deals in which sometimes moves are made and he will stay on, she will stay on for the next three, four months. No, it's over. Hoppy, you broke the story early this morning. Give us the gist. What do we got? Well, you know, I... There's so many, so many layers to this. Let me, let me start with this, and we'll get into the, the nuts and bolts of it, is that, and Brad got me thinking about this, too. I get so caught up in the story, and then when Brad was um, on talk line, you know, he mentioned uh, thinking about Shane and his family, and, you know, West Virginia's a small state. Everybody knows everybody. He's a West Virginia guy, uh, came back to, as a graduate, came back to WVU, was always willing, whenever I asked to come on talk line, always answered any question. I think just represented the university well, you know, good dude, good dude. So I'm sorry that it has not worked out, uh, at least according to WV officials for, I'm sorry that it didn't work out. um, Just that on a personal level, on a professional level, the, what we're reporting is that, you know, Saturday we're doing our pregame and Pete Thamel of ESPN says on game day that there's something up with Neil Brown and with Shane Lyons and, you know, they're, they're on the bubble there. And so we started scrambling to see what we could learn. And I, I did not know. I did not know until that point that Shane Lyons was on the hot seat. So we started nosing around the Royal Wee yesterday and trying to learn more about it and learned that uh, WVU President E. Gordon Gee met with Shane Lyons yesterday afternoon and expressed the um, desire to go in a new direction. Apparently, some of the concerns that uh, Gee had and top administrators at WVU had maybe some members of the board of governors as well that with this dramatically changing landscape in college athletics with NIL and with the transfer rule and trying to raise money for the NIL and with Shane's background in compliance and a conference 
administration, that was he the best person, the person best suited to be in charge of this mammoth responsibility going forward? And obviously, WV concluded that he was not. And there were some periphery issues, apparently, uh, having to do with uh, you know situations at, at the Mountain Athletic Club and fundraising. Uh, also, with a, a sense, at least this is WVU's perspective, maybe he was delegating too much rather than doing more uh, hands-on things. And then, of course, and Brad will speak to this, the elephant in the room is what is going to happen with the football program. So all these things converged to lead WVU to this decision to, quote-unquote, seek a new direction, and that happened rather rapidly, and he's out, and this national search is underway. I will begin by saying what I said on your program this morning, that saying once a Mountaineer, always a Mountaineer is a pretty popular saying. I would think and advise and just s- submit to those listening that this may be a good time to hold that and have some grace and some class about a guy that came back here, a native West Virginian that came back to try and rebuild this athletic department and put a lot of equity, sweat equity, time away from his family and hard work into that end. It didn't get to where he wanted or anybody wanted, and the administration has made the decision to move on. But I would just submit to you this would be a time for some grace, probably for a a person that is now not in the position that he always wanted to be in. So I, I will begin with that and just want to make that part clear. The second part, there's a lot of things you just said right there, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that. But in my opinion, I think two things can be true. All of those criticisms that were laid out in your story can can be true or thought of by the people making this decision while also acknowledging this is about football. This, this is about a football program that is not living up to expectations of anybody, including Neil Brown and his staff, but this is about football. And the guy that made the hire of Neil Brown, the coach that is now not winning to the level that people want it to be made. It it has come down to that. It almost always comes down to that in college athletics, your fortunes as the athletic director are tied to your head coaches, specifically the football coach. So I think two things can be true in this case, but I, I think, make no mistake, this has this comes down to football success or lack thereof. Hey, t- Brad, tell me this. The, again, you're in, you in administration. You have definitive opinions about this. What what logic are the logistics here? The, the possibility that there's still a possibility Neil, Neil Brown will be fired, but not until after the season that will be evaluated. We'll get to that. But what are, what is the what is the logic behind the logistics of doing the AD now as opposed to firing the coach? Yeah, if I was looking at it from that perspective, I would say this. If if a search is going to happen for an external candidate, which is clear, given the fact that Rob Alsop, President Gee's right hand, has been installed as the interim here. It wasn't somebody already in the athletic department. That signifies to me that they're going outside. It doesn't take. Sherlock Holmes to figure that out, right? It's going to be an external hire rather than somebody internal. So that tells me when you go out to begin searching for your candidates, that candidate has to know first and foremost, your first order of business is evaluation of the football program. Whether that means removing Neil Brown once you're hired or not, or whether that directive is given, my guess is it won't be explicitly stated, but it will be known to that candidate that that's the first order of business, not pleased with where the football program is from a results standpoint, which was in Gordon Gee's statement, correct? It definitively said that. So that has to be given to an athletic director candidate before they come in. So I I think start and stop with that. If you're looking at the mechanics of a hire, someone coming in has to know exactly what duty number one is by removing Shane today, but leaving the football program as is achieves that. And oh, by the way, there's still a season left ongoing. Well, what, what, what do you gain by removing the football coach now, especially after showing some improvement and getting a win? Can we let's, let's go to that statement by Gordon Gee in the release where he said, we are supporting Coach Neil Brown and our team as we complete our season over the next few weeks. We are aware there are some deficiencies, but we have not given up on the coach and the team, and they have not given up on each other. The evaluation of the football program will be the first task of our new athletic director, and no changes will be made until that review is completed. So that also takes that off the table. So nothing's going to happen on Neil Brown until after the season. Athletic director is hired first, and then athletic director evaluates where things are with the football program. Yes. So a bunch of pieces to pull apart on this. And one of the things that we have spent a a lot of time about on this program here and then on Sportsline on a regular basis, and I've said this before, makes some folks eyes glaze over and they go like, why do you guys talk about this? 
transfer portal. Why do you guys spend so much time on this NIL? Why do you guys spend time talking about the money pools and the collectives? Well, because I think to Brad's point, number one, first and foremost, this is all about football. But 1A is the changing world that we have seen in the last two to three years over the creations of these money pools in order to fund student athletes. And that didn't even exist when Shane first came in here. And so in essence, based upon what you're saying and your story, Hoppy, is they're looking at someone that is going to be out there at the forefront to do that line of work because as we see, it's not going away and you have to go get that. Now, to your point, you know, Shane was absolutely fantastic. And you take a look at the list of accomplishments and you'll start to see the list of accomplishments of what he did when he was here. That's a great run. And the job changed tremendously from when he started to where he is. I mean, he was the National Athletic Director of the Year in 2021. <laughs> not 2014, not 2015, 2021. His peers, NACTA, named him the National Athletic Director. He's, and as you see these stories that came out after this announcement came out today, the national folks, he is respected, right? Chair of the NCAA Council. He, was, he oversaw football during COVID. He was on the football oversight committee. He, was the, he and Gordon Gee were the two that pushed to make sure the Big 12 played football that year. So my point to all that is tremendous run. I'm going to say this to you. Yeah. I'm going to say this to you. I bet you right now he is extremely upset and – feels very, very hurt, right? Totally, totally get that. I'll also tell you this. I think in three months from today, he'll feel better than he does now. And by that, I mean this. This job has changed so much. The stresses that put this job puts on you, I think down the road, he'll look at this and go like, you know what? I probably wasn't having fun doing this and navigating in this new world. I truly do believe that. I truly do believe that. How could you? Yeah. I mean, how could you? You were athletic directors everywhere were were taking athletic administration were just taking curveballs every day. I mean, guiding a school through uh, through COVID and all the in the pandemic and everything associated with that and the rapid changes with with NIL and transfers, but particularly COVID. I mean, that was they were like daily just preoccupied with how to cope with all that. And did the fans come back? Did they not come back? Did, I mean, just incredible stuff that, that there was no template for, that you'd never done before. You know, I got a call today from a national reporter who wanted to know what was going on. What's going on? A name, name dropper. See, he does that, Brad. Uh, yeah. why, why would we be surprised that it's a name? And a uh, he guy. said, you know, uh, uh, Shane was very well respected nationally. I said, I know, I know. But I think, and we're going to talk about this, I think that it gets to, in fact, we know it gets to this changing landscape. You know, Shane was, not to talk about him like he's dead. I mean, Shane was a grinder, you know, a grinder. I mean, really just trying to trying to make things better on a daily basis, get through it. How are we going to manage this? How are we going to manage that? And we have entered this chaotic period of lawlessness, rule, rulelessness, on mm -hmm. so how do you even manage i yeah. mean he's a manager and it's brad you're into a point where there aren't any rules yet of how you manage this stuff particularly when it comes to nil well and and that's that's where if you start to look at what's next the next person in has has a lot and and remember you're not going to get an expert hired in this area because why there aren't, there aren't any. It just started. So there's not an expert in how to handle this. But I will continue to say what I've said. One of the, the most important pieces going forward for success of, let's just take football for a second, for success of football is the management of NIL and the collective situation that's popped up. That That's a hard relationship, guys. That's a really difficult thing to navigate the way it's currently constituted with the NCAA saying you can't have direct involvement but yet there is kind of direct involvement, but no, there's really not, but yet it's a separate group of people that are out there in essence competing against you right now. You have fundraisers for the departments, and I'm not just talking West Virginia, this is nationally. Fundraisers are out there for universities that are trying to, to raise dollars, but you also have these collectives out there operating 
fairly independently trying to raise dollars as well. So there's an element of competition. But the internal university needs the collective to be successful because that's right now the way the rules are written. That's how you have to get money back to the athletes. So there's got to be a crossover. Even though the NCAA says there can't be, there has to be. Mm -hmm. How does the collective know which players Neil Brown wants to bring in? How does the Florida collective know what Billy Napier wants to bring in? There has to be some working together, and that's a really difficult environment the way the rules are structured. So, But that's part of the game. Moving forward, we've said this a million times, That's going if that's the way it is, if that's the way it's going to be, then that's going to have to fund some of the players you're bringing in. And you can't get to where you want to go from a wins and losses standpoint if you're not funding players. And you may not fund at the level of Alabama or Auburn, but you can still have success, but you're going to have to find a way to fund. But as it sits now, those are two separate entities mm -hmm. that need to work together, but it's not clear how you can do that in the new world. Fair? Is that a fair way to say that? Totally And that's it. a challenge for everybody. A hire for a new athletic director, but it was certainly going to be a challenge for another athletic director, especially one that grew up in compliance and rules, to try and look at this thing and go, okay, I get it. It's not in my nature to like where this is going from how do we navigate this, but I've got to. But that's a hard challenge, not just for Shane, not just for the new AD, but all of college sports. And that is why we are starting to see athletic directors get hired that don't have that background of governance and compliance. What do they hire now? In essence, they hire business-oriented people. I mean, I don't think it's a stretch going down the road that you're going to see entrepreneurial type guys you know I saw in Thamel's story he said like they were in a, there was a word that you know they, they wanted Shane to create new revenue streams and things like that well that's what that type of a person does a person set does and I think uh, as I said the, the job changed when Shane first came here he said I'm committing to the student athlete and we're going to improve our learning and our you know our education as far as getting these kids you know they have right now the highest number of kids ever on the athletic director honor roll and on the Big 12 honor roll. So they made a huge commitment in the, in the uh, academic support areas as well. But where this thing is going now is more, it's pay for play. And they, they got, I mean, they, and they got some money for yeah, the they, players. Yeah, they, they for, have for some. For all the athletes. They, they have some. Yeah, $59.80, $5,980 just based on academics. But I think what the realization is is going around is that the, the other schools, I talked to someone today in the league, okay, in the league that knows of the collectives, and I said to him, what's your top basketball player make? And he said, we match what the minimum salary would be or the max salary in the G League, which is $100,000. So in order to get that kid, instead of going to the G League, they just said, okay, fine, a hundy. I said, okay, what are you guys doing in football? He said, about 35 of our guys make about $3,000 a month. So if you do the math on that, about $36,000 in a year. And so that's where it is. He said, our coach also doesn't, he also said to us, we don't have to pay everyone but maybe eventually it tears out. You come in, hey, we think you have a chance to play. If you get to this level, i.e., you're on the field second string, you get this. If you become a starter, you get this. That's where this thing's going. And again, I said this a couple shows ago or last show, and as much as people might just scream at that right now, that's where this is. And you have to be in that world. That's the space that we're in. I, I wonder if, and I, I don't know Shane well, I, I hope to have him on my public affairs program tomorrow but i you still do that show I, mondays and fridays good but i wonder if um i wonder if because it look it's a it's a shock to get forced out it's a shock to get fired especially if you feel you it, it is you've been wronged okay so he's got to have tremendously hurt feelings personally and professionally that's 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 hard to take there might also be a little sense of relief there because of where things are i mean I can't imagine this job being much fun these days. No. You know, I mean, I, not when only you take his... this job, when you, when you take the job, I mean, you know, Brad, you were in the administration. I mean, you have, you enjoy the games, you enjoy the atmosphere, you enjoy making a difference in student athletes' lives, uh, built relationships with people. But man, 
there are headaches galore. You are hit from so many different directions. And so that's let's talk about that for a second, because Tony, to your point on type of background, it you know it, it's been for a number of years now, fifteen years or so at least. The the majority of the folks getting AD jobs are are revenue generators, either from a corporate sales standpoint or a fundraising standpoint, for obvious reasons. How many times do we say, including on this program, we just said it's about the money, it's about the revenue generation. So so those types generally get the jobs. I think the challenge moving forward is. Not only do you need to have some of that, but two things. You also better have somebody inside, if you're that type, that can manage the day-to-day machine that is that is athletics. Because there's a lot of pieces. People want to scream and yell just about football. There's a lot of other sports and day-to-day things that are coming along in the management of a department. So you need to have both types of personalities to be able to run this thing, number one. Number two... We've seen, we saw a trend of going outside the college athletics world and bringing ADs in, but that was really short-lived, guys, to be honest. There weren't a lot of those types that are still around in the business that came in from outside. And why is that? Part of it, it, it's such a difficult road to navigate. There are so many pieces. You just alluded to some of them. Those are just a tiny fraction of what goes on in the day-to-day. It is hard to get consensus right? You hear that in your political world a lot, building consensus. It is really hard to do that as an athletic director with the donors that exist, with the president's office, with your coaches of which there are, in West Virginia's case, what, 18? 18 different head coaches that all have opinions. Some opinions matter more than others. There's no question, but that doesn't mean there aren't coaches of other sports that fans aren't talking about that are constantly in there asking for stuff. It is a, it is a hard system to navigate. It's not like running a lot of other businesses. No. So that's also a challenge too when you start to look outside. It's got to be somebody that can understand to navigate through this as well. So those are our initial thoughts on all of this. We'll get into some more when we jump into uh, our texts that have come in as well. And we were going to jump all over this football game from this past Saturday. There was a game? I know, kind of like uh, it went away quickly, but really huge weekend. F- basketball started on Friday. West Virginia went up and uh, had a great game at Pitt, led by double figures, 11 at halftime, and then uh, pounded them again in the second half and cruised to a victory at Pitt. And it's a very, very early sample size on this Mountaineer basketball team. But obviously, there is a noticeable improvement in the overall talent level. There is an overall improvement of the team's ability to guard and play defense. And to this moment, it's desire to play defense. I think right now, there are enough good players on the floor and on the bench at the same time that guys know that they have to bring it. And as a result, so far, so good. Now, again two-game sample size, but uh, encouraging and uh, a nice 2-0 start. Two games this week, Moorhead State Tuesday night tomorrow. Penn, who got beat by Towson uh, this weekend, is in here on Friday, and then West Virginia gets real, real as they go to Portland. They play Purdue. uh, Also in that uh, tournament, North Carolina, currently number one in the nation. Gonzaga, currently number two in the nation. Duke, um, who's also up there is in as well. So it's going to get real, real, but at least right now, good, uh, good thoughts. A bunch of things jumped out to me Friday. First and foremost, I I look at that pit game as we often do some of those non-conference football games where I, I, listen, Pitt's going to struggle. I get it. Pitt's going to have a tough year ahead of them, but you didn't struggle with them. You went in and said, Oh, is that right? Was that right? We're just going to line up, <laughs> knock you right in the face and drill you. Absolutely drilled you. Really impressive effort. A, a couple things jumped. Seem to move the ball a little bit better than in past years. Mm-hmm. I still continue to say this feels to me like a TBT team. We spent some time down at the TBT, <laughs> and I mean that from this standpoint. There were a bunch of school names in that TBT that you went, oh, that's not a blue blood. And they take the floor, and you're like, dude, those are pros. Those guys know how to play. I feel that way about this team. They're old. They know how to play. They And add guys in. You keep bringing guys in off the bench. And there hasn't been one guy where I've gone, oh, get him out. Like, just give him a couple minutes and get him out. It's every guy that comes in, you go, oh, hey, okay, he's adding something. Yeah, one other point to that. 
one other point, not only those guys Friday that were dressed, there was also a guy watching the game in the stands. He'll be joining them late. <laughs> he was there. He was watching. He I, was watching. It, he got the Manhattan transfer. The Manhattan transfer Manhattan was there? Manhattan transfer was watching. Perez. He was in there. So not very, very Sylvia DeSosa. We're going to get our in-season I lo- edition. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I only wish he played when in high he, When does he uh, suit up? That is what remains to be seen. Some are hoping by uh, – I don't know if it's going to be the end of the first semester when you start second semester before you go league play, but league play starts 31 of December. So I, I like the way they're connecting their playing. You said it right. Really early sample size, and the competition ramps up immensely. But I have I have loved the effort. I've loved the skills on the floor. They got up and down. If Joe Toussaint's going to give you anywhere close to what he gave you Friday night, man, he was really good. And then you take that old group of guys that knows how to play and play a 10 games. Emmett, and you mix Trey, Stevenson. Stevenson. They're all, 30, all 32 to 33 years old. <laughs> They're great. Been overseas for three, four, five years, know how to play the game. <laughs> Love having that. But then you mix in that youth with like Mo Wagee. Dude, he continues to go. I like go. him a lot. Like he is a, sometimes those young big guys, you, there's an element of baby deer to them. Yeah. Where you like you see flashes, but you're like, oh, oh yeah, be careful there, hold right, on. Like, right, you, right. Not with yeah, that dude. Yeah. That dude is fluid and is adding stuff immediately. I like him a lot. You know, I'm glad you said baby deer because I made the same reference during the game, but I screwed it up. What'd you, What'd say? you call it? I said he's like a doe out there, and then someone sent me a thing. It's a dude. A doe is a female. What you want to say is a fawn because it could still be a boy or a girl before it turns into a doe. So I, I screwed that up. I thought an experienced hunter such as yourself would know that. <laughs> retired. Somebody with a retired scope retired, should probably know no, the difference. Yeah, scope should know the difference. Retired hunter. Well, but we get your drift. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about but to your point, slow, a baby yeah. deer. You know, they yeah. they kind of like they yeah. pop around, and, and, then, uh, and then at moments they jump really high and they take off fast. You're like, oh, look at that. <laughs> but a lot of times they're struggling to get their footing. That no, is not what he, he is. He, he is he, he has stepped in and been a factor right away. He got it. You know, he like, got, he has, I like him. He's a lot. got no fear. He just goes straight at the rim. Now he's going to see. Now you go to play Purdue. Got that old seven footer standing in front of you. We'll see how that goes. But I like it in his heart. And then Trey Mitchell. He was just kind of a roll guy on Friday. They're going to be games where they're going to Trey Mitchell's going to crank it up and they're going to run offense to him. He's going to be really good. Well, and and I almost think that's one of the positives for this group that you drill pit like you did and you don't have to mention how good Trey Mitchell was because mm-hmm. there's other guys. Because you're right, Trey Mitchell's clearly a dude, and there's going to be times when he looks like a dude on the floor. You just didn't need him. You had other guys that were performing so well. More yeah. basketball in a second. We got to get to football. We got to get to football because it wouldn't do justice. Finally beat Oklahoma. I mean, the last time everyone knows the story, hadn't beat Oklahoma since the Fiesta Bowl. And we came about close like a zillion times to getting them. And as fate would have it, a year after getting beat by a walk-off field goal, you beat them by a walk-off field goal, which is super hard to do, (laughs) right, in football (laughs) to get walk-offs in back-to-back years. But that was a moment. It was a miserable weather day. It wasn't the prettiest game. Mm-mm. You saw Garrett Green come off of the bench to spark West Virginia. And it was, again, just one of those games that was just like, like you were tired like you took a final exam as a fan yes. after the game yeah. was yes. over. Whether yes. you were there and cold and wet or not, or just watched it or listened to it in your house, you came away and go like, Man, my head's kind of like, it feels floaty. My head feels floaty. Like, well, that was hard. <laughs> it, feels, it feels, you know how like your brain, sometimes you can just kind of feel your brain just kind of in there. It, just, it was one of those games, and I'm thrilled that they got it done. Thrilled that they got it done. And we're going to get into that. Well, we're getting into that or we're- Go ahead, jump okay. in. Well, I was, you know, I was still on kind of an election high, and I thought that what, what happens in the closing days before an election, that is you try to get your base out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Who Who are your hardcores? You got to get them to go vote. So West Virginia had their base there Saturday. Those fans, that's your base, right? And those, God bless those fans. They came and they stayed for the most part in miserable conditions. It was bad. You know, made some noise, and that that's number one. Number two is that you know Garrett Green clearly gave that team a boost, and so coaches made a call. You know that that's not easy to do. What I was talking about put the put the backup in, put the backup in, and coaches are often very reluctant to do that. And finally, they said, "Okay, make a call," and got Garrett Green in there, and he got him that touchdown in the, before the end of the half, and then started the second half. 
you know, and led him to victory. And, and you could tell there was a spring. In, I mean, he gives you a spring. There was a spring in a step. Now, you know, sometimes passing becomes a bit of an adventure, but, but uh, they played hard for him. And they made plays in the defense. You know, once again, the defense showed you some things, made some stops. Oklahoma's one of 13, one of 15 on third and fourth down, something like that. I mean, that's a performance. That's a performance. When they got Mims and Eric Gray. It's not a bad offense. That's not a bad offense. So, you know, West Virginia pulled it together. You know, and it's evident, it is evident that that they are still playing hard. And you know what? At the end of that game, Tony, and they're singing, for the duration of that game, and at the end of that game, and they're singing Country Roads, they're not thinking, oh, that's the fourth win. and we're out. They're thinking they just beat Oklahoma, okay? And I don't care if Oklahoma's off a little bit or not, which they are. They beat Oklahoma. Take it. It might be the last time they're on that field. Probably will be. Don't know how it's not. It, impressive performance all the way around. I think you guys are right. Green clearly provide a spark coming in there. Good job being able to adjust the offensive scheme, too, to fit him. That was the other part of that. They, they had to adjust that. Credit the offensive line, too. Yes. They did yeoman's work. That defense did a great job. And I think it was, was it 1 of 11 and then 0 of 2 on fourth down? Something like that, yeah. For the defense. So when it mattered, that was a good example of Ben don't break. You caught some breaks. Oklahoma yes. had some mistakes. That's part of the deal. But that defense continues its improvement, at least if nothing else from a results-based. Right. right. You look at what you did to that offense. Okay, great. You're right. That's not the Oklahoma of lore. Don't care. Right, don't, don't care. Don't care. Doesn't matter. Don't care if they're not as good. They're not. Don't care. Great job by that defense. And then the end of that game coming down there, we'll go through this in a minute, but some of the way you possessed the ball yes. and just mulched them and lined up and said, oh, here comes a run. Right in your face, we're running it. we got a quarterback that runs it. We're going to run it. And guess what you can't do, Oklahoma? You can't stop us running it. 15 plays in that final drive. Yeah. What was that, six minutes they chewed six, off the 40, clock? 642. Walk down there. Th- there were drives before that that were impressive. That one right there for a team that is struggling to find an identity and struggle to win, man, that was a hell of an identity for Saturday. Yeah. Line up, here's what's coming. And, 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 and you to, can't stop it, and we're going to go win the game. You know, and, really and to impressive. Use, and to use all the time, because what are you worried about? You say, okay. You're moving the ball, but you're going to give them time, and they can have it come down. So to use all the clock and bring in Casey Lake. Also, we talk all the time about guys making plays, and guys did. And, you know, Green also. You know, Sam James. Sam James made some Sam plays. Sam James was massive. Sam James, you know, gets the big return. I mean, West Virginia hasn't had a lot of success in that. He gives you a big return because you feel position. Yep. Sam James makes a that catch led on. led your first score that kept you in that yeah, game. Yeah, Had and the it, big 50-50 ball. Yeah. Right down Huge. the side. Massive catch. Massive. And then had the fake punt, fake punt and, and the fa- he yeah. ran on his own. That was a great job by a guy to to string that thing out, wait for the opening, and then shoot up. It was a pass, too. That was an initial pass option. He looked downfield. He said, if the guy follows me and he comes toward me, I'm throwing it over his head. If he doesn't, then I'm going. And that, that was, was his option. Oh, I, so Green gets a ton of credit and should. The line should too. Sam James really shouldn't. By the way, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. <laughs> you no, started I just to say, just no, grab the baton just, out of your hand. I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll finish I that just, sentence. I like the run better than the pass. <laughs> it was a great run, though. It was a and great a run. Patient because- run. That's the other thing. Looking for pass down. That's a patient run in a situation when it's easy to not be patient because that internal clock is going, saying, man, i got to get this first down. And he wasn't close and waited that, and that thing opened, and boom, he hit it right. Yeah, he's got, great, he's got well great, done. great speed, and he's showing that on kickoffs as well. We talked to him after the game, and he said, you know, Dwight said to him, I'm glad you don't go sideways. Like drives Dwight crazy when guys return kicks and they start to go on angles. He said, just get the thing upfield. He go goes, field. Man, yeah, go I field. got my speed. You know, another pl- huge play in that game, the fourth and two that they convert on the last drive, Bryce Ford Wheaton, there were two defenders waiting there. Yes. And he slipped through the crack of the gate and he went right between them. That was massive. And then obviously Garrett Green on the run that took it inside the 10-yard line where it looked as though West Virginia was just going to maybe there was going to be some time left on the clock for Oklahoma. By the way, just received word from uh, producer Taylor that uh, Garrett has been named the Offensive Player of the Week in the Big 12 Conference. So congratulations to Garrett. And Oliver Straw, for the second time this year, has been accorded Special Teams Player of the Week. He shares this week's award. And I've been, I've been on the Straw. I'm going, fre- I'm going freshman All-American for Straw. He Can he get, be an All-American if he's from Australian? Australia? He, he was born in the United States. So he can get it? Absolutely. Can okay. Get it. All world. Uh, when, you know, in green, um, again, prisoner of the moment, but 
to make the plays that he did, and Tony, you talked about that that run that ran more clock and got inside the five, and he he got up and signaled the, oh, <laughs> signaled the first. I mean, he just it, it just <laughs> every, it just raised everything up, you well, know. Com- and 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 I tell you, that was not an easy run. No, I mean, he, he he eluded a couple of guys, broke a tackle. I mean, he had uh, a couple here, where he broke on his own. No here's question. here's the deal. Okay, if you remember back 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 many years ago, it seems like a ten years ago, but Alan Taylor who used to be with us, who's now with The Athletic, that covers the University of Florida, he went down and did a story on Garrett Green when he was in high school. Obviously, Kerchival doesn't remember it, but he uh, he, he approved that spending, did which I, is oh, massive. Geez. He probably, you know, he probably also Very had... character. He probably had Alan, like, also, like, hey, we also need some paper picked up in uh, Savannah, Georgia. On your way down, could you do that? Because you're going to drive a rental car that's a, a Yugo. But anyway, I don't know why I digress there. And he probably told me afterward, but go ahead. <laughs> Garrett Green, his he's a spark. I mean, he's a he's a guy that's all emotion and energy. My shout out to Garrett Green is this. I have tremendous respect for whether it's a non sport or an athlete, when you wait your turn. There have been two hundred and six reasons why Garrett Green could have left by now. But he didn't. And he got his he got his gold star for hanging in there. He could have easily said, Hey man, I'm out of here. JT Daniels is coming into the program. I'm out of here. He didn't. And now he's got his moment. So it's huge. And also, this off season when we were doing our interviews, I think I'm saying this correctly. Was it Reed Williams, Brad, that said guys in the locker room know before sometimes the coaches do? Yes. It was Reed, right? Yeah. Who the co- who you know who the quarterback should be because I think we were probably talking to him about Pat, and I think that also happened. And that's not to take away from J T. Daniels, but what I'm saying is that the guys in the locker room like to play for Garrett Green. Not that they don't for J T. But when he got in there, I think they went like, "Let's go, let's help him out there, let's do it." And that also helped the flow of all of that. You know, I, I defer a lot to Steve Dunlap, who coached forever and is part of our broadcast. And I think his perspective is so important. And when whatever's going on with JT Daniels, we don't know. But again, he, Brad, there are times he hasn't gotten a lot of help, drop passes, you know, under pressure, playing good defenses, whatever. But Dunlap said, you know, make a change. I mean, do, do something different. And that paid off. Uh, Saturday. Now the question is, do you start him against Kansas State? And I think the answer is yes. So it's a couple things. Also, I think we need to to say that matchup worked well, too, for Garrett Green. Yes. Oklahoma's big deficiency has been what? Stopping the run. Stopping the run. So you had a quarterback that was primarily run. That worked very well. This week's a whole different story with that. So, Hop, we'll get into what, what do you do, what should you do. But a couple things. So that matchup was really good. That was a great time to make that change. We've been talking for two and a half weeks. Clearly something's different about JT Daniels. I, I thought that was a pretty clear time for a change. But some things that you you looked at in the past with Garrett and had to get past. Number one, turnovers, correct? Right. Yes. No turnovers on Saturday. Right. Yep. Massive. Number two, the ability to throw the football, right? Yes. Solid. The pass. Yes. Solid. Two of eight starting out. Yep. He was two of his first eight. Some weren't not even close. Right. Closed by completing five in a row and seven of his last nine. Excellent job, including that fourth down conversion, but got some help, which you need to from the receivers. That that pay, passed to Bryce Ford Wheaton in the end zone? Yeah, right? that was a nice catch, yeah. contested. Sam James going up with that 50-50 ball. So you need some help from the receivers. He got it. The concern would be if you start to look at forward, and, and, and let me just give this plug. More interviews, please, with Garrett Green and Casey Legg. Excuse me? Please make Garrett Green, I, quite frankly, I'd like to see Garrett Green made available, even if he doesn't play. He was an <laughs> awesome interview after that game. You talk about a kid that just had fun and was able to articulate his fun. More Garrett Green, and Casey Legg was a wonderful interview, yeah, too. Always Put is. more guys out there. That team has a bunch of guys that can articulate their thoughts, are very good at talking. We need more of them available to agree. talk to. They are tremendous. But the one concern you have about Garrett Green was what last year, Tony? What did Neil Brown always say? He's got to run what we tell him to run. (laughs) And it was a nice, funny moment because you won the game. But afterwards, he was asked about, 
well, should should you have on that last play maybe centered that ball there to make the angle a little bit better Couldn't for Casey himself. Lake? Neil, Neil said afterwards, the play was center the ball to make the angle a little better. So Garrett didn't do what we told him to. They asked Green about it. And to his credit, this is why I love him in the interview, he kind of chuckled. He goes, yeah, that was the play. I was supposed to center the ball there to help the angle. Can't help himself. Probably a little selfish by me. I wanted to win the game. He wanted to run it in for the touchdown. <laughs> Which, Jeez. again, funny we can laugh about it because yeah, it yeah. turned out Casey, Casey Leg made the angle work, knocked it in, and won the game. So that becomes a funny, lighthearted moment. But that's part of it, right? You you gotta you gotta do what you're there to do. So, so you're saying it, basically Garrett Green is you with peanut M and M's, can't control himself. Like you know what, you're knowing not, what I what knowing you, what you, I'm supposed to do is you, walk you by the tub of peanut M and M's. But what well, happens as I'm saying to myself, walk by, walk by, walk by? I reach over and grab a big handful. Yes, couldn't help myself. Well, exactly. I mean, we're watching that, and everybody in our studio is going. Center the ball, center the ball, center the ball, center the ball, center the ball. <laughs> and they go, what? And then Casey Leg comes on, and we then we look at the scene and go, ooh, that's a tough angle. <laughs> and Leg, ooh, he's going to kick that from where? And it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a weird, yeah, weird, I, weird I, kick. I didn't, I didn't realize how much of a knuckler it was, oh, it was until after ball. it was over. And then, obviously, you had the situation with the muffed hold in the first half sure, yeah, so that sure, was yeah. that was far from a being a high pressure moment hey yeah. let's face yeah. it you, you don't want to say it but let's face it okay as long time mountaineer fans <laughs> yep when you're when that situation is happening you're going like you're thinking of anything right you're going like uh, you exactly you're, you're going through uh, and then when it finally goes snap, over that's why it down, and it's <laughs> wet and it's cold yeah all the you things. could just see like yeah ah, ah, it's, blo it's blocked he's running down the other end of the field oh, what you know we what's all you know what's awesome about that moment too friend of the program casey leg of course been in here and been oh, yeah. great you know guy. what's awesome and I, I buy this 100 i think the least nervous person watching or in attendance was casey leg no question He's chill. Great interview. He's really after. chill. He's great not great interview and articulated how just at peace he is and that it, his ability to make or miss kicks isn't going to. I mean, just said all the right things, but it was a believable say all the oh, right yeah. things. Yeah. He, he's as chilled as I've ever seen, he which was is great. Awesome. I, so I guarantee you, I guarantee collectively we were a thousand times more nervous for that kick oh. than Casey Leg was. Absolutely. The guy doing it. Agreed? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. He yeah, he just, it. You know, and again, it gets back to what we always talk about. Guys making plays. And Saturday, you got some help from Oklahoma, but you had some guys making plays. Right, Brad? I mean, Both sides of, all three sides all th of the ball. All three sides of the say. ball. Because there have been other games where West Virginia's performed poorly, and you go, who's making a play? Who's doing something here? And, and, and you don't see it. And you, don't, and you look at that and you go, I don't, I don't know who's going to make a play here. And that, that was also good, not just about getting the win, but about seeing players do things that propel you to the win. It, it was. And, and so a couple, uh, you know, go back to macro for a second. I, I'm happy for all of them associated with the program over there, players and coaches. Yeah. They, and again, they, they didn't get to enjoy it long before now they're thrust back into the chaos of what is happening now. But congratulations to that group. And I thought Neil's pitch all week of an opportunity to do something that's never been done. Right. And how rare that is, especially for a team that's struggling, that obviously resonated. Those guys went that's a out good pitch. there, right? That was a good pitch, and it worked, and those guys played hard, and they came through. So I'm happy that they have that moment, even though now they're thrust back into chaos. A agreed, because that was about playing, and we talked about that Saturday, that was about playing Oklahoma. It wasn't about, you got a losing record, they're not quite with it. That was about playing Oklahoma. Sure. And for each other. I mean, I know that's a cliche that gets thrown around by folks internal. Well, that, that was clear evidence of that. That's not one of the all-time great atmospheres in Mountaineer Field, right? That, that's a lot of people chose to stay away, which I, I understand and get that. That's not an indictment on people that didn't come. But that's a group of players that didn't let any of that affect them, that didn't affect, didn't let any of the noise affect them and went out and did their jobs and won a game. So I was, I was happy to see them get a result of yeah. the work they put in. 100% agree with you. And to your point, those guys, no matter what happens going forward, the one thing that will never be able to be taken away from them I was on the team that beat Oklahoma for the first time in the Big 12. Yeah. And going forward, who knows how many more times there's West Virginia, Oklahoma. Hey, they, they may not play Oklahoma again, right? The new schedule comes out. That might be it. Correct. That could potentially be it. I do think they are on. No. I think they may be done. And it's going to come out here in the next couple of weeks early. This, it'll, I think they're done. I think that might be the last time. So. Get the yeah, last one. Yeah, it, it, as you guys said, and, and for those players, for the rest of their lives, and you, it comes up in conversation later, you know, 30 years from now, and like, yeah, our senior year, we, you know, we have like four and, you know, five wins, whatever. But we beat Oklahoma. Beat Oklahoma. Yeah, beat Oklahoma. You did. 
Yeah. Yep. Hey, uh, we're going to get a text here in a little bit. Women's soccer. Oh, wait. Let's do this first. Burdette camping. So last week was if the game's total point total went over what it was at kickoff, then Burdette would give $500 off of parts, sales, and service. Okay. That didn't happen. We hit uh, 43 Didn't happen because the West Virginia 85 Bears showed up defensively. <laughs> so what was the what was the, the number? Was it 35? Was it 35% off? No, it's 500 bucks. Oh, it's just 500. It was 500 bucks. If they hit over, what did they get if it was under though? Wasn't there a minimum? Was there a floor on that or no? I don't remember there being a f- So it's just zero. Okay. I don't know. What was the final? 23-20? Yeah, it's yep. 43. Yeah. What was the what was the number? 65, 66? 68 yes. and a half. No, I we believe. didn't hit. Yeah, yeah we it didn't was, hit. It was well under. Yeah, we didn't it hit. It was well under. Yeah. All right, so what are we doing? Talking about what's next? Yeah, give them the promo for this week. All right, stay with me here, Kerchival. Okay. I know you always like to question and prod and I just want it to be clear. Well, this won't be clear. Right. I'll, try and do, I'll try and do my best. All right, I'm listening. So this week, there's a women's soccer game, women's basketball, a football game, and there's actually two men's basketball games. So there's four different sports competing for WVU this week. With five games. Five games, but don't worry about the five games. There's four sports competing. Okay. Okay? You through Saturday or through Sunday? Through Saturday, because I just said football. Okay. All right, I'm with you. Okay, you with me? With you so far. Four sports competing. If West Virginia gets wins in two of those four sports, two of the four sports win, it's a $500 huh? discount on a purchase of $1,000 or more. What's that again? If two of the four sports competing for WVU this week, women's soccer, women's basketball, football, men's basketball, right. two of those four get a win, it's $500 off a $1,000 purchase. That's happening. All right, I got a question. You can go cash that check. I got a question. So the if the basketball team, which plays twice. Which, t- which team? Men's? Men's. Be clear. The, you were trying men's, to clarify. If, Be clear. If the men's basketball team plays twice. Which they do. But if they win twice, that doesn't count. Counts as one that sport. That counts as one sport. One it's a sport, sport winning. Sport-based promotion. It's men's basketball. So you've got two chances for the men's basketball team right. to and, check their box. Okay. All right, I got it. Two of the four sports. Women's basketball, men's basketball, football, women's soccer. Oh, I like Two that. of the four win, you get five hundred off a thousand. I think that's I think that's a I think that's doable. Do you understand that? I do. Clarified? Clear. Okay. Doable. So who do the women play? You know? Penn State. I mean oh, bas- basketball. basketball. I forget the opponent, but it's a fun ten A. M. Ten A. M. education. Me? It's the education day. Which, by the way, we got to talk about that Thursday. I might be a little late arriving. Here. 10 a. M. I got to go check that out for a little bit. 10 a.m. They do it what for day? school. Thursday, for, 10 a.m.? They do Thursday, it for school kids. They bring tons, thousands of kids in on uh, school buses. School bus, school it's bus, awesome. school bus. Little it's kids awesome. down there just shrieking, screaming, yelling. You know, there is nothing like. And that, there's this, there, this is sound. <laughs> there's nothing like the sound. There's also, and I'll give Hunter credit for this. He, he loves this. If that's a win by WV Women's Basketball, and there's thousands of little kids singing Country Roads in oh. unison, it's one of the all-time great experiences. Oh, I wish I could That be comes there. up Thursday, 10 a.m. wish I could be there. Oh, I have a public affairs program during that time. We'll do it live from over there. They are, over, play, I'll they are playing well, fun, Winthrop is who they're playing. Winthrop. Winthrop. They play and, Winthrop. and the men play? Men play Moorhead State Tuesday night and Penn on Friday. That, this, this is a slam dunk. I know it is. You got, you got 500 two, bucks. You got, uh, what, do I, what do I always fantastic. tell you about plays? What do I always tell you? What? Don't. Don't do that, what you just did. Don't do that. I like the odds. Still a good bet. <laughs> I like the odds. <laughs> still looks good. I like your odds. Promotion brought to us by Burdette you Camping worried, Center, the only much. warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Yeah, Visit them know. at BurdetteCamping.com. The You're you were worried about the Ohio State place Saturday. Sweating bullets on that. No Ridiculous. Cash it. So, here's a situation for our wonderful, faithful listeners of our program. This has happened now twice in the last couple of weeks. It's a good problem, but I just want to let you know so you don't get hurt. Your feelings don't get hurt. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting way more texts than we can 
read. It's like steam release. Unless uh, unless we do a telethon. <laughs> <laughs> like if we just said, we're going for four and a half hours and we're going to read every single text. Raising then we, money for the NIL. Then we can, <laughs> we're probably not that far away from that, to be yeah. quite honest with you. Um, so just to let you know, what did I say like last time we had like, oh, it was well over 160 or something like really? that. Really? At last, that was a couple shows ago. We exceeded that number again. We were just a hair under 200 really? total. Wow. So the way they come in, they come in in pages of 50, 50, 100, 150, almost to the, to the 200. So that probably lessens your chance. Secondly, because of the nature of what's happened here with Shane Lyons, obviously we... We're focusing more on that. And thirdly, if possible, again, I'll ask politely, the days of the really super long dispatches, I understand that's cathartic for the writer and you want to get that off of your chest. That's cool. But the chance of that being read is very little or almost non-existent because it's just we can't time-wise. I, I mean, unless you're writing that stuff like in Shakespeare and it's iambic pentameter, it's probably not going to get read. So all I'm saying is, again, I'm going back to brevity. Give it to me in about four sentences, and that's going to make everyone allowed to play the game. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Pretty clear? Keep it tight. Okay. So we say on Steam release, keep it tight. Two things, firstly. Unlike us. What do you mean? I mean, yeah. we, just what I we, said. We don't keep it tight on here. No. Do, 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 do. I got a couple of things, but I can't start them until I do this, because if I didn't do this, then we'd be taking off. Sexual healing. Currently number one on Australian one, in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> Oliver nice, Straw. He did a nice job there not talking over the track. Posted it. Oh, posting. But remember how mad you used to get, like if you hit record on your boombox when the when the song was playing, but the DJ would come on and talk over <laughs> it, it would ruin the recording of the song. Like, ah, I'm recording now. But the DJ, like Tony said, DJ talks to the post. Used to Talk back to the in the post. day. See, there'd be a thing. I'd say 16 seconds before Madonna starts singing "Material Girl." Uh -huh. So you go like 102 WVAQ, 143 in the afternoon. Yeah. Former DJ myself, well aware of the post. Where did you jog? Where did you, where did you jog? A high school radio station. I didn't know they're, that. They're very big. Served sports duties and would come in and have a shift, play music. So cart. you were doing cart machine. I knew cart music. machines. So you were doing you guys, this. You clowns think you're the only ones running cart machines out here? I was out there doing that all. the Long time too. I didn't know. So what you was your format? Well, it was all over the place. It was a high school <laughs> radio station. It was like whatever you wanted that hour. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Not a lot of strict rules there, huh? <laughs> now let me ask you this then. Since you've become this media celebrity mogul, do you regret that you didn't go into broadcasting right out of college? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Good. No. I'm glad to hear that. Because I found my way back after having a wonderful... Right. Two decades with some great experiences. Hoppy's got a lot of regret that he didn't do his first, his first. I wanted to get into mortuary sciences and uh, never made that commitment to get up there to the embalming school. A lot of weekend work on that. Of course, and, I work weekends now. So. Yeah. So he just kind of backed off. So two things to, two things but, to. But I also want to correct the record because you always say I hate music. That's not yeah, entirely that's accurate. Yeah. I was a former DJ. I understand so. that. Thank you. Yeah. Take Thank you don't play music now. I mean, you don't. Thank you. You don't. Well, no, there's a lot of things i got to listen to. I just don't have enough time for Understood. music all the time. Understood. But it's also a fight in our car, so I have to, I have to acquiesce because they're asking for VAQ to be turned on constantly. Yeah, Gigi wants to hear VAQ. They, my two don't necessarily care about the lines and where we may be headed with the lines, so they would prefer VAQ. So. <laughs> don't care about the Daddy, will you turn fight. off turn off VSIN, Daddy, please? please. Daddy, is, is Ohio State still favored by 28? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, what's the juice on the OU game? <laughs> 
Yeah, do you think there'll be a hook on the West Virginia line? So I am back more into popular music maybe than I've ever been. Dad, you think you're fading at TCU this week? <laughs> I bet Gigi's into Harry Styles, isn't she? Very li- likes likes the VAQ format, right? Yeah. Now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so two things to fix. One, on our last episode, <laughs> we Jesus. had last episode we uh, we we took uh, we had f- we made fun of longtime listener Jumping Jack from Morgantown. Remember when I questioned out loud why he didn't show up? Because since he goes to college in Iowa, why wasn't he at the Iowa State game? And then we criticized him for critiquing us as part of his assignment. Yeah, we criticized Uh, his criticism. We criticized his criticism. And we just, for the record, want to know that that was uh, to Jack. It was totally tongue-in-cheek. As you know, Jack, we break them in here. And uh, that was just, if we don't jack you, then we don't love you. No pun intended. So he says he's coming back, though, for Thanksgiving. I might see him here shortly. Oh, good. Yeah. Maybe we can bring he's him at, in. He's had a good first semester at college. He's broad, or first class, he's however broad, they do He's that. broadcasting all this stuff, basically. I, like two games in one day or something the, the other day. Two games in a day, and I think they promoted him to dean of the school. Or athletic director. Yeah. yeah. So, Okay. Texter, do you think the university would hire a 33-year-old local whose only job would be to hype the team and the crowd? I will work for food. Keep being great, you three. I don't know if that's on the list of uh, possible jobs. From Sean in Athens, West Virginia, is it possible this game was the signature win Coach Brown has been searching for? I know Oklahoma is down. However, they're still Sooners. QB change took guts at work. Garrett was obviously coached up, developed tremendously since the last time we saw him. What do you guys think? The signature wins need to be followed by more success. Okay, because if if you go out and lay an egg for two consecutive weeks, then it's an outlier. It's not a signature win. Brandon in Barrickville checks in. Longtime listener, first time texter. This team and coaching staff has grit and fight left in them. Nothing like a walk off win over OU, followed by thousands of your wet and cold friends singing country roads. I am not going to critique or break down the game. I'm not a coach. I'm just a former buckskin-wearing, rifle-firing mascot. Just happy and excited for this team. One suggestion for the NCAA Rule Committee, though. If the opposing team gets penalized for having 12 men on the field, then the other team should be allowed to hold their opponent to offset the advantage. It seems fair to me. Let's go Mountaineers. That would be kind of neat. If that's You're, You get a free hold if you see they have 12. <laughs> that's very creative. If that's a Brandon, I think it is one of the all-time great Mountaineers. Oh, Absolutely. Michael and Culloden love the show. It's provided a bright spot in an otherwise abysmal season. Great win over Oklahoma. Finally, I was one of those newish listeners who was asking themselves, what is the text number? (laughs) Might as well give it. 304-404-4083. 304-404-4083. Best way to remember that is, Get a tattoo of it, put it on your forehead, and then look in the mirror. Although the numbers may appear back, backwards. But why did you all go over this? I mean, why does it say call? Eh, that's a bad graphic. When, we'll you, when you really want text, we'll I, get a fix. I, I don't know that it needs fixed now. I think you just go with it. It's so bad, it's good. It's retro. <laughs> yeah, retro. So bad, it's good. Back from the early days of the podcast, <laughs> we had dial-up phones. <laughs> I have, I have nightmares about a dial-up phone. Excuse me? I have I have night- because there was nothing worse than when you got like five of the the eight no, how many yes. numbers are seven and you were on like the fifth and your finger slips yes. and it went back and you had to restart the yes. whole thing. I have a nightmare about yes. that. Do you too? Oh, I hated that. Yeah. But I mean you have I mean a, a sleep at night nightmare. No, I don't. Because I'm over it now. You truly do. Have, you truly have a nightmare about it. Yeah, like I'm trying like I'm like there's a story and I'm trying to call in, I'm trying to dial the number. You're trying to spin it. Trying to slip. spin. I can't do it. Yeah, you slip. Yeah, hang it through. Yeah, nightmare. It's work related. Work related. Hated I did the tangled cord too. <laughs> it was always twisted, and matted. But one of the, my favorite things was when you when you unplug it and hold it in reverse, and then the thing unwinds itself, oh, and then so it was nice and. You know, it also got out of that. hand as time went on. Like a big technology move was like initially, 
that you normally had the square phone in the kitchen on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. And it would come with the standard size, probably 36 inch cord length, right? And then someone got the idea, you know what? What if we put about a seven and a half foot cord on that baby? Yep. And that thing would touch the floor and like you'd get a call and you'd be able to walk over to the sink, the refrigerator, and lay down on your couch. Yes. All at the same time and, because you had the cord. And then if you were really running behind, if we could stretch back into the bedroom while you got dressed with that thing. <laughs> Who needed cordless phones? That damn cord stretched for blocks. <laughs> You were at the neighbor's house taking a call. <laughs> Outside in the driveway. Snake through it's all, there, through all, the screen door. It's all stretched, it's down the steps. It's all it's outside. stretched out then, laying yeah. on the floor, oh, collecting dust. Yeah. I'm out here playing basketball. I did hate it when it was playing, stretched out. Playing basketball in the driveway. Hey, you got a call. Here, just give me the phone. Just hand, it, hand it out here. Matt from Morgantown. Do you carry your phone with you all the time in the house? You don't. Excuse me? You, you don't. don't. You definitely don't. You don't. You don't either. Bull crap. Well, then you just ignore. You uh, you got first priority. You're, you're an A1. one. Well, you're an A plus one. I'd hate to be down the list then. No, you're A plus one. Huh? You come in. You got you. You got to remember. You, you're very good about my calls. You're horrific about texts. You're a slow response texter. Hmm. I didn't know that. All right, I'm going to start tracking it. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, Matt from Morgantown. TC Hoppy Senator Spreads from the great state of Over Under. Oh, yeah. This is our Australian listener. Oh. I could see that when that text came in, it was plus six one, and then his number. <laughs> I couldn't call. I couldn't call. <laughs> How would you call it? It'd be impossible. You, we can't use the board to call out here when we need to. We definitely couldn't call international. He said, "I just no want. Chance. I wanted to praise WV Sports this week, and unfortunately, we don't get to do this much anymore. But I wanted to take a second and praise our student athletes. We finally got over our win on OU, beat the brakes off of Pitt in basketball, which was much needed because." I was in the stands at the Pitt football game, and it's nice to get some payback. And our women's soccer team beat the Chokies in the NCAA tournament. Wow, it's about time we had a positive weekend. Let's go. Okay, I was wrong. That's not the Australian dude. That's Matt from Morgantown. The Australian guy is in here somewhere. Hang on, that's Adam. Anyway, Randy State College, as much as I hate to admit it, I realize I am one of the many fickle WV fans. Just last week, I couldn't see any way that Neil would possibly be the head coach. But watching that game on Saturday, it's obviously he has not obviously he has not lost the locker room. Watching them play, it is clear we lack talent and experience in some positions, but it's also clear the players gave great effort and believed they could win. There was more than one occasion that the team could have given up. They did not. In my view, winning on a cold, damp day against an opponent you haven't beaten in the Big 12 has earned him and his staff another year. Last week, I asked you your views on players entering the portal. You stayed away from over under of 13 and a half, and I understand why. I don't know what's going to happen in the remaining games. We may struggle, but given what I witnessed Saturday, if Neil is retained as a head coach, I'm taking under. Let's go Mountaineers. There you go. Uh, texter Grant Parkersburg. It's amazing what winning does for your mood. Beat Pitt, finally beat Oklahoma. Ladies take down Tech. Is this an NCAA tournament basketball team? Has the football team finally found what it takes to win? I'll let the coaches and administrators worry about that stuff right now. As a fan, given our recent history, I'm just going to enjoy this moment for as long as possible. Texter. It's apparent JT's arm is having issues. Green comes in, team responds. I believe his biggest asset is that he the needs a leader, the team needs a leader, and that someone believes. JT does not have the emotional leadership. Guys play harder under a leader that has passion, making them... Block harder, catch the ball, 50-50 balls. I understand JT may be overall better. Besides being mobile, Garrett brings some things JT cannot in emotion. In sports, emotion can impact others. Jordan, Brady, Kobe, etc. They made players around them better. JT is always the same calm. Watch the other players when Green gets emotional in the game. To me, fire in the huddle will cause the receivers to hold on, linemen to block better, running backs to run harder. This is just one man's opinion. We, it, it's interesting because there was a time earlier in the season when we were praising um, JT's calm demeanor that when he made a mistake, he didn't get ruffled and he came out and he, perf he continued to perform well. And we saw it at that time, we saw it as an advantage. But now it seems like we're, we're seeing that as a, as a disadvantage when you're looking for a spark on the team. 
yeah, that may be overstating it. I mean, I think the spark was evident. This team needed a spark, but some of it's also just because JT's performance hasn't been what it is. I don't know if that's so much demeanor as it was. He just wasn't completing the passes at the same rate he was early. And I think both can, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You might see both play. Right, You might yeah. see them both come in and maybe Green gets more and you're trying to search for somebody that can provide you as they did Saturday. I mean, that that was that's how Garrett stayed in. He came in and did some things and you went, oh, okay, you gotta, you gotta keep riding that hot hand. I, I will say this and I will caution everybody. We've seen this work in reverse. It's one of the rare times that I can remember West Virginia has been able to pull the Jet Duffy. Yeah. Right, where Oklahoma's gotta be sitting to over there going, are you kidding me, Garrett Green? He, he didn't play two plays, he came in and beat us? Right, that's what they're saying on he their side. Became, he became he their, became Jet, their Duffy. Jet Duffy. They will not forget Garrett Green. And good, ha ha, good, because we've had to do that a million <laughs> times. So, ha ha, glad you remember Garrett for the rest of, you, of of all time. But it's also a different deal going against the team you're getting this weekend that is really good and playing really well. And with what does Steve always say? A full week to prepare with tape of that. They do. They so do. Let's just caution here. It's. Absolutely, you absolutely. Can, you can take what just happened at Oklahoma without having to pick that up and say definitively that's what's going to happen moving forward. Ab Enjoy the moment for what it was. Heap all the praise you want upon Garrett Green because it was awesome. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can pick it right up and see. So let's just see what happens this agree. week. I ag agree completely, at least so you've given Kansas State one other thing they have to worry about. No question. No question. That might prove to be an advantage. No question. I'll tell you what's scary. We'll talk about it Thursday. OK State. Oh, Deuce Vaughn. Mm, they will. Will Howard. They will strike Colin you. Colin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bishop. <laughs> Todd, Tyler Lockett. <laughs> Bill Snyder. Michael Beasley, <laughs> Ron Prince, they've had some, Dana Altman. They've had some good players over the years. Lon Kruger, <laughs> Tex Winter, <laughs> Bell Walker. <laughs> it's a good team coming in here. We'll West, talk Thursday. Wesley Aquandu, <laughs> <laughs> Dean Wade. You know, it, the fact that Gray, you know, who was – I don't know why the Big 12 hasn't been talking more about him because, uh, I mean, Eric Gray was pretty good. But now you got Deuce Vaughn coming in here. I know Ooh. we'll talk about that Thursday, and that's a problem. That dude can go. Yeah, can and go. Adrian Martinez early in the season. Is he you got to see where injuries are with their quarterback. But Adrian Martinez was early season Heisman candidate to say he was, he was outstanding. Yeah, when he goes out, Will Howard comes in and throws four touchdown passes. He does. They got, that, that'll, that'll be a tough matchup here. So yeah. We'll see. Like, that's their game plan. Like Martinez goes, okay, Martinez, you start, and then Will Howard will come in, and no matter who we're playing, he's just going to win the game. After Martinez gets hurt. Yep. Yeah. Um, had a situation at the uh, pit game. I was at halftime. Heard a guy screeching. Huh? Second level. Screeching. Screeching. Hey, Scopes! <laughs> Scopes! <laughs> so I look up, old Mountaineer fan up there, second level. And uh, yelling out scopes. So you know what I gave him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he enjoyed it. I think he enjoyed it. Good. Walking out I'm of the glad you're in a way arena is getting called scopes. That yeah. makes my day. And I'm glad you I'm glad you're also answering that call. <laughs> yeah. Walking out of the alumni center last Tuesday night, this guy probably like sixty ish. And I walked by him, I'm heading to a car, you know. And he says, Hey, my life, my wife loves three guys. Oh, there's a gave me my wife loves three guys. That's not big. Idiot. Yeah. Usually not big with that normally demographic. My wife called you guys idiots. Yeah. That's normally what we get. I know. Text her to the bookie, the baker. Those are usually not wrong, Kurt. <laughs> and to the, the candlestick maker? And the retaining wall maker. <laughs> I was unaware Marshall Henderson had still still had eligibility. But it's great to see him playing for the world champions this year. <laughs> Talking about Eric Stevenson, obviously. Yes, he's calling yeah. Eric Stevenson Marshall Henderson. Marshall Henderson's the cat. You may remember. Stevenson. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was um, just going to say, Stevenson after the game did admit maybe he talks a little bit too much at I times. I thought that, yeah. <laughs> I heard hugs gave him, yeah, you think? 
Hugs game, you think? <laughs> just classic. Anyway, talk, this is this is our this is our Australian but you know me, I like that. listener watcher. In all seriousness, I was pleasantly surprised to see so many players able to score at different levels against Pitt. With all due with then when with all due respect, <laughs> in previous season it was really only Taz that was able to. Should make for a much more interesting team offensively. Adam and Melbourne. P.S. Landshark has to be up there for best sporty nicknames. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, Landshark. We need to check and see. Hey, Taylor. Check and see how Gary Brown's season is doing in the Australian League because he got off hot start. I wonder how he's doing. Texter, hey, three guys, Josh in the Twin Cities. I'm hoping that a year or two down the road here, we look back at this win over OU and say, well, that's when it all turned around for the better. Texter, hey, three guys, did you see the WVU fans in Germany celebrating West Virginia's wins this weekend over Oklahoma Tech in women's soccer and over Army and Rifle. So Geno Smith played in Germany mm-hmm. yesterday. The um, Seahawks did not get the W, but the entire stadium singing Country Roads Saw that. in Munich, which is awesome. Did you also see that video that was out there of, of Bruce Irvin, who's on the Seahawks obviously as well, kind of vibing and singing to us? That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Boy, I tell you what, I was thinking of that yesterday. Man, that is a long way to fly Ooh. to get beat. Like, I think if you go overseas and play a game in the NFL and you win, that ride home has got to be, like, really fun. But, like, if you're the Seahawks yesterday, you got to go, like, we just freaking flew, whatever it is, 4,000 miles, and we got to get all 4, the way. 4,000. How far is it to Germany? Well, from Seattle? Oh, yeah. From I was doing it from New York. I mean, three, that's oh, like yeah, 7,000 yeah, yeah, miles. Yeah, 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 right? you're right. I was kind of doing it off the East Coast. Yeah, you were exactly right. So, anyway, thought about that. Um, that's a 12-hour, 30-minute flight. 12-hour, 12 12-hour, 12 30-minute flight, Seattle, Munich. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would be because it's going to take you every bit of four and a half to get over here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Texter, Joe in Charleston. Jeez. I think the weather gave West Virginia an edge. Oklahoma had played in good weather all year. West Virginia has played in the elements a lot. The remote TV broadcast made it look miserable. Legs field goal looked like it was through a windshield wiper. <laughs> <laughs> You know what blew my mind? And he was, it was so wet, I saw pictures, and uh, Mountaineer Mary's buckskins turned from brown to black. Mm-hmm. They could have folded up after the extra point block. They didn't. They kept it at 12-6 to six at half. That saved the game. Falling two scores down would have been curtains. Joe and Charleston. Um, you know what blew me out? What? I did not realize in this post-COVID era that um, – I did not realize that Fox still was not sending announcers to games. So I looked at my monitor right before, and they're practicing their stand-up in front of a green screen. Okay, so they're not here. But what blew me out was when I went home. (laughs) I I checked three times because it freaked me out. I went home, and I I said to Joan, I said, hey, Joan, turn that uh, K-State Baylor on. Same. Because she runs TV control. I kind of sit back, and she goes close to the TV. And so she's running remote. I said, she goes, what is it? I said, fine. She flipped it on. It's the same two announcers. The I don't know if the play-by-play guy switched his jacket or not, but the analyst did. Devin Gardner. Devin Gardner. He switched jackets, and now they're doing Baylor-Kansas State. They did two games on Saturday from the studio. I was totally flipped out. Really? Because obviously I wasn't listening to him Saturday. We right, were doing right. our game day right, coverage, right. but I saw them, and then I did the same thing, and I thought, I thought Devin Gardner was here. What is happening? Yeah. Yeah, freaked me out. Yeah. I'm with but, you. Hey, Fox, how about a little something for the effort? Can we get an announcer at the location, right? I don't know. <clears throat> Look who's here. P1 Jason in Dallas. Hey, guys. First and foremost, I'd like to tell Pitt, thanks for having us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect usage. Hey, Taylor, could you put thanks for having us up? You got thanks for having us, Taylor, on the uh, picture? Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Just a mid-court walk after the game. Thanks for having us. They had done that once or twice. <laughs> Four players in double figures. 24, 25-point victory at the peak. That's what we do. You walk right across the logo and wave to everybody. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah, when I'm sorry. It's, uh, that's, I mean, it's still a rivalry, but they're down. They're, they're down. That was a good shot. It's right where you walk. Right across. Someone, Don't feel bad for them, though. Someone, to- <laughs> someone no. told Hugs after the game. Nobody's apologizing. Someone told Hugs after the game. He said, I think... Uh, Coach Capel just might have had seniors night. You know, last walk out. <laughs> Could be. 25-point victory at the Pete, says P1 and Jason in Dallas. Yeah, pretty good. He's got like seven A's there for yeah. couple Oklahoma fans at my club, golf club, told me they thought this would be a get-right game for them. I guess they were correct. They got right, right out of town. <laughs> On the candy front, Reese's are definitely my favorite too. But have you tried the Twix cookies and cream? Basically, it's a Twix with an Oreo inside, a close second place. During the last episode, Senator Spreads mentioned that Mississippi Valley State has no chance of winning a championship. I don't disagree, but because it wasn't explicitly stated, I'm wondering if that comment was made with all due respect. <laughs> Shout out to WVU golfer Westy McCabe, a great name. I met friends of his family at my church over the past couple of weeks. Always a West Virginia connection. I love the show. Um, is McCabe a freshman from Dallas? Can you effort that? Hey, ta- d- uh, Taylor, find out if Westy McCabe is from Dallas-Fort Worth. Thank you. Texter. Well, that didn't take long. I mean, <laughs> Taylor's on this stuff. Oh, no, he gave me the Australian Gary Brown. Gary Brown is averaging 11 points, shooting 32%, dishing out nine assists, mm. nine dimes a game. Oh, my. Mm. That's good. Nine dimes a game. You know, speaking of nine dimes, we talked about that point guard position earlier for West Virginia. Yeah. Nine assists, three turnovers against Pitt. You'll take that three oh. to one all day long. Oh. Combined. Taylor says that Westy McCabe is from Dallas. So I think he's a freshman. And so, yeah, got it. <clears throat> Texter, long-time listener, first-time texter, call me crazy, but it seems like our program has the most success when our quarterback has a last name that's a color. (laughs) Pat White, Jarrett Brown, yesterday, Garrett Green. I think there may be something here. Hopefully, we can hit the recruiting trail with a color wheel in mind. (laughs) See if if there's a Cyrus Black out there who's, who's... Being recruited well, at quarterback. The great, the great, uh, fem- the great the female. Color wheel in that is. That Give is you good. a color wheel. <laughs> Vita Blue. They had a pretty yeah. good pitcher, right? Yeah. Texter, I need a little recon help from you three. Mountaineer basketball managers beat Pitts managers on Friday. Alex Ruoff looked like he got a sweat in based upon the post-game photograph. Did Alex play? Because I'll take any advantage to beat Pitt, no matter the occasion. I will get it confirmed, but my answer would be yes. If you're on staff, then you're eligible. I've said this before. We went went out to Kansas managers to play one year, and it was a dude that won a natty with him that was on the floor for him. So I would think Alex still has that bounce in him and wants to go, so I, I would imagine that he did. Yeah. Grant in Danville, Pennsylvania. Hello! <laughs> Tony Brad Hoppy. Credit to the coaching staff for putting Garrett in. I hope he gets the start against K-State. Provides energy, dynamic playmaking. We need to have a chance. Also, shout out to Casey Legg. Incredible consistency. He's now 13 of 13 on the season. I'll tell you who the happiest guy was when he kicked that field goal. Old TK in there. Taylor, our producer. You think he got ramped up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He goes, Dude, I'd like to see that kick again because it was a knuckler. Oh, it's a knuckler. It's a knuckler. Yeah. Um, Bad angle. Texter, some interesting <laughs> stats. <laughs> it was. A uh, texter sent us these stats where basically when West Virginia has two receivers that get over 1,000 yards and receiving yards in a year, they have good records. When they don't, 
they have been four and eight, eight and five, ten and three, five and seven, six and four, six and seven. So get a thousand yards. He said, What happened in 2015 and 16, you might ask? Skylar Howard at starting QB had over 400 yards rushing in both seasons. I got to say, I did not think that Garrett was the future until I looked at these stats. Pat White tweeted, We gave you the blueprint. Maybe he is right. Success at West Virginia starts with a quarterback that is able to run and make plays. Well, I don't think that starts at West Virginia. I think college football, you have got to have a quarterback. I'm not saying a running quarterback, but a quarterback that is a threat enough to run the football to make defenses play you honestly. You know, and that's been a transition. And those, those college quarterbacks that have run successfully in the past, they've transitioned to the pros. Oh, absolutely. You see pros now, pro quarterbacks running absolutely. all the time. Pat, Pat uh, Mahomes, right, huh? Jalen Hurts, huh? Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, <laughs> Josh Allen, Brock Purdy, Brock's a fine looking man. Picture of health. Oh, um, two things. I don't know where are those two. Okay. So you remember a couple episodes ago when you went trick-or-treating and you met those brothers? Yeah. And they were huge listeners? Yeah. Give me the, can you give me the father and son with the red-headed dude? This is one of them. Yeah. Yes. That's him. Yes. So he ID'd. He yeah. came out. The Kidwells. The Kidwells. Yeah, Kidwell family. Uh, fantastic. Wonderful family. Wonderful. Terrific. That child. That's a beautiful child. Oh, a beautiful little baby. I'm glad you had him bundled up there because that weather succulated. He got a nice hat on. I bet you yeah. got a binky. I mean, let me ask you this. Who in the stands. That baby's dialed in, too. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Who in the stands didn't want to have that on Saturday? Everyone wanted a blanket. Everyone wanted a hat. And let's face it, everyone wanted a binky in, too, at the same time. Yep. That kid's living That kid's living a dream life right there. And he has someone holding him. I'd like someone to hold me, too, with a binky. It's <laughs> a great picture. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Taylor, I'd, I'd go to a game on a bad weather day if I had all that. <laughs> hey, Taylor, put the other picture up. I can't find that text right now, but that's another great father-son. So he sent me uh, that, and he said he was not alive. The youngster was not alive the last time we beat Oklahoma. That's well done. Yeah. Multiple flying WVs in the picture, including the one at midfield that's almost perfectly framed. You think trademark and licensing, how, how much that picture make him right there? That's like, good. That's well done. Good picture. Yeah. So Cool moment. That was good. Um, I had more. I lost my place. I lost my place. Hey, Taylor, is that everything? What was that great communication system across the wall? Know. I think he said we're all good. Um, Randy from State College. Did I already read this? No, basically, same kind of a gist that players give energy. And it's basically it. We're coming back on Thursday. And Harveth, you're going to have. Yes, sir. For those that are listening, and it's before Tuesday morning, um, Hoppy's going to do a special edition of Talk Line tomorrow. He's actually going to do the show on Tuesday because normally he's been going Monday and Sunday nights. <laughs> and. Um, you're going to have Rob Alsop on your program? Alsop will be on at uh, 10.30 tomorrow. Rob Alsop, interim AD, will be on at 10.30 tomorrow, and I'm efforting Shane Lyons. Okay. And also, uh, West Virginia 2nd District Congressman Alex Mooney at 10.06, just in case you're following politics as well. I don't. Thank you. <laughs> um, also, the... Rob, when? 10.30. Thank you. The time has been set for the West Virginia-Oklahoma State game, which will close the regular season. They announced that today, and that is a noon kick, which makes it 11 a.m. Oh, good. Senator, we haven't talked about this. What's up with Oklahoma State? I mean, they, I thought, I would like, up to the middle of the season, I'm going like, here they go again. Yeah, they had, they what had happened? some, they had some nice on? luck early in the season. Excuse Schedule, me? Scheduling was very well done early in the season. Numbers say they're not. 
not what they maybe were early. And they've had a lot of injuries, Spencer too. Sanders Spencer Sanders right. has been dinged a bunch here down the stretch. In fact, it looked like he wasn't going to play Saturday. They ended up having to insert him in there to make sure they got the win. So they've been banged up pretty good, too. i tell you what. Not that K-State beat Baylor, but the way they beat him. I mean, they just beat the hell out of him. Yeah, well, K-State's oh, yeah. dangerous. Oh, <laughs> they're the real deal. They're good. You uh, I'll that. tell you what. And I, I have been dead wrong. I've been fading TCU for weeks. Oh, my gosh. You talk about the luck factor being through the roof, and they lined up and made Texas look silly. 29 yards for Bijan on 12 yep. carries. And, yep. and yours couldn't find anybody. He, he had a terrible game throwing the football. That TCU defense stunned me. They were really good. That's a nice win for them. They, Think my, about that, boys. West Virginia had them. Had them. And, and they, that TCU, was and we there. saw that TCU defense was very vulnerable. Well, that was and the they issue. Up, and in fact, the playoff committee, and one of the more ridiculous things they've ever said, came out, well, oh, they're not a balanced team. They don't have a good defense. A couple weeks ago when they were rated sixth or seventh or whatever it was, then they moved them to fourth, didn't say anything about that. That suddenly went away. It didn't matter as much. But that defense that, looked really good against Texas. They're just who, – who do they have left? Because they're just they're – just, a charm. I mean, every week, every week. I mean, the the play was Texas, right? Uh, uh, yes, that was the play. That was the play. Even and though that, Texas was favored by six or seven, that was still seven, the play. That was the play, and that was dead wrong. That was a dead wrong play. TCU had that early on, just dominated them. I mean, everybody's been fading TCU now for what six weeks? Yeah, five weeks. What? Uh, hey, real quick, Tony. Tony. Or Taylor says you missed a picture of the tow truck. There's a tow truck picture. Oh, yeah. These people are flipping out. That was the Burger King parking lot in Morgantown before the football game Saturday. People are losing their noodle. Burger King is basically doubling down, saying, you think we're going to tow you for basketball only? We got tow trucks in there for football games. Come on, bring it in. Come on. Come on, bring it in. Bring it in. We'll have you up on two wheels so fast you won't know what hit you. Big you know, I don't want. I don't want to. Getting towed is one is in the first world problem, but it's a bad thing. Nobody likes to get towed. It's no. a bad thing. It's a huge pain. But I mean, seriously, it is their parking lot. I mean, it's Burger mm. King's parking lot. You can't. I don't think you could expect realistically, despite what they've done historically, to say, "Oh, yeah, I'm just going to park here for six hours." <laughs> I mean, seriously, you can't do that, can you? I mean, you can't expect to do that without consequences. No, most of the time you can't go to park places where you're not supposed to park. Most of the time that's not allowed. Now, I know there are those that are saying it's, you know. They've done it for a long done time. done it for a long time, they've... but stuff changes. I mean, stuff changes, right? Stuff changes. I wonder if they have, I haven't been there. I wonder if they have signs up that say parking for customers only. Why don't you do this if you're Burger King? I mean, I guarantee you people would be willing to pay. What's that, Brad, what do you think? $25 there? 15 Sell spots. Yeah. What do you think? Well, you can make. But you know they want to. They want to. They want to sell food. They don't want to sell parking spots. They want to sell. They want a family of five to come in there and roll up about a forty-two dollar bill. And take whatever revenue you can get. Do what you got to do. Creative revenue sources. That's the buzzword of the day. Well, I think the, the the better revenue source is for have the parking lot available for like seven hours so people come in and buy food. Not that you sold your parking space for twenty-five dollars. All about revenue. Why are you blinking fast? You don't agree with that? No. Revenue generation. Money, you going to get it if you're Burger King? Sell what you got. TCU closes <laughs> yeah, the season. Yeah, prime parking, Kirchhoff. TCU closes the season. They're in Waco this weekend to play Baylor's. Short and, favorites. And then home to the Iowa States on the final weekend. They might they might finish this thing out. They got a chance if they can get, to Iowa, if they can get Baylor. But you know football's crazy. Oh, this is exactly crazy. this is exactly when those it's things correct. happen. You're playing with a lot of pressure sitting on top of you. Oh. They are in prime position. But you they know, have done and, a great job getting to this point. That pressure's mounting. And flat spots are real. Oklahoma, West Virginia got Oklahoma Brad. That was a flat spot. They got Bedlam coming up, eleven o'clock in the morning, rain. Their program's on fire. I mean they're, they're, they're yeah, they're, they're they're in trouble. They don't they don't know what they Boy, have. they have, and they have quickly quickly turned the narrative, which they should, to Bedlam. I gotta get ready for Bedlam. Rivalry game. Forget about West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Three guys before the game. Might be the last time they play that. Correct. Might yeah, be. they're not playing them anymore. Yeah. Three guys before the game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems, your full service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at Comax. WV.com. That's K O M A X WV.com. Comax. WV.com. We would not 
give them as much love as we give them if they didn't deserve the love. Does that make sense? Uh, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Paul McCartney, right? Is the, do I have that backward? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. But anyway, they're really super good people. So if you're in the in the need for managing IT services, managing voice, managing your phone services within your business, 24-7 remote monitoring, peace of mind that you all need, they're the people. ComaxWV.com. And Burdette Camping, $500 if... Two of WVU's sports teams, women's soccer, women's basketball, men's basketball, and football. If two of those teams this week win, then you get $500 off when you spend 1000 on parts, sales, and service. Automatic. At Burdett Camp. Just like that. I mean, he's dying. Automatic. Hey, they're dying to give away $500. I mean, they're like doing like, next thing will be, if there's a kickoff in the football game, you get $500. <laughs> Both of you stop it. Just go out and get two wins here. Both of you knock it off. Play the music. It's like the jinx and all the listeners out there telling the same thing. Stop talking. Brad says, let them go get their 500 off. Stop talking. (laughs) Get two wins. You worry too much. (laughs) Like you say, when the the under, when the service academies play, (laughs) just take it. Just take it. Cash the ticket. Might get, might get, shoot. Might get that done midweek. All right. We're out. Thanks for being with us. Three guys before the game returns Thursday with a preview. For Hoppy, for the Senator, and for Taylor, we be out. See y'all.